Hello and welcome to a Hit the Books instructional video. I'm your host Chris Holcomb and I'll be running you through how to bag, board, and box your comics properly to ensure that your comics stay fresh for years to come. This information might seem simple to the average comic collector, but it is crucial to ensuring that your comic collection maintains its value and its presentation for years to come. I'll also include some new tips for the more savvy comic collectors out there. You're going to need some properly sized acid-free bags. You're going to need some properly sized acid-free cardboard stock. You're going to need some properly sized comic book boxes, like so. And you're going to need some simple scotch tape. The bags come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, ranging from the old and large magazine size and golden age books all the way up through silver age and into the modern age books. I'll list all the different sizes and dimensions here on the screen for you. So feel free to take a snapshot of that in case you need it for later. Generally, the older the comic is, the larger the bag will need to be. If you want to be cheap, you can buy exclusively magazine sized or golden age sized books. However, I would strongly discourage this as this will leave more space in the bag for your comic to kind of move around and get damaged and fold over itself, which will permanently damage your books and devalue the comic. Ideally, you always want a very snug fit for the comic book in the bag. This will ensure that it doesn't move around too much. Plus, it's always better for presentation when you have a smooth fitted comic board and bag for your comic book. The bags should always, 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 always be acid-free bags. You can see them clearly on the label when I'm running you through things. I'll point everything out to you so you know where, where to look for it and what to look for. Um, acid will slowly break down the pigmentation on the comic and the paper itself and will yield a kind of yellowed, uh, foul-smelling uh, vapor and sometimes liquid if it liquefies um, inside the bag and in the comic and it will damage severely damage and devalue your comics uh, libraries across America famously uh, ran into this problem when they began kind of using the new technology of laminating things and putting plastic liners on everything and on their documents and their maps uh, with good intentions in the attempt to try to preserve things long into the future Unfortunately, uh, even good intentions can have some unintended consequences when poorly executed. So always make sure those bags are acid-free. Boards are very similar. You always want properly sized boards that are also acid-free. Again, if you want to go the cheap route, you can always get the biggest size boards and just trim them down to your need uh, for the bag. Always size the board for the bag, not the comic book itself. This will ensure that there aren't uh, extra spaces inside of the comic bag uh, where the comic can get folded over and lose the protection of the hard cardboard. Light colors like white are generally the most common and beneficial boards for your comic books. This will ensure that more of the light is reflected away from the comic book and less is absorbed. Kind of like the opposite of what an athlete does when they put eye black under their eyes to absorb more light into their eye and see a little bit more clearly. This will protect your book from any kind of direct light damage or at the very least minimize it. Light damage is the bane to every comic book collector. Boxes come in two primary lengths. You have your short boxes and you have your long boxes. Any office storage box may suffice for this purpose, but you'll want to ensure that the boxes are only a little bit wider than the comics being stored inside. This ensures that the, the comics don't poke out and start to get bent up on the sides when maybe a fall occurs or the box is dropped or something of that sort of nature. Long boxes, which you typically see at your comic shops when you're looking through their back catalog, store many, many, many more comics and are convenient for that particular purpose. However, there are some drawbacks. Uh, it's very tedious to transport them if you need to move them anywhere. And the boxes have a tendency to kind of bend in the middle uh, where the box becomes weak. 
and uh, collapse in on itself, which isn't a big deal, but it can potentially damage comics and it can potentially let more kind of moisture or any other contaminants into the box that previously it would have protected against. It's also a little bit of an eyesore having these long, huge boxes stick out unless you have a very specific uh, kind of under the mattress type of place to store them. I personally opt for the short boxes because you can they're more malleable. You can uh, store them more conveniently in small spaces. For example, here in the corner of our podcast studio, I just stack them up like Lego pieces, and they fit very well. They're not too much of an eyesore, and they actually kind of double as a shelf. So it's up to you how you want to store your, your comic collection. I would recommend the short boxes, even though you're not getting as much bang for the buck. There are also a lot of really, really cool companies out there that make these printed short boxes um, that have classic comic book designs and comic book logos and uh, all sorts of great arts and prints um, that can really take these boxes from being kind of an eyesore and an inconvenience to being an additional piece of art in whatever kind of uh, (laughs) entertainment cave you've built for yourself. Now, the printed boxes can be a little bit pricey, but they really do reduce the kind of eyesore potential uh, of the standard office box and comic book boxes. And they have a little bit of lamination on them usually, so it's just an added layer of protection to keep your collector mind at ease when you're worried about your your comic collection getting wet or any other kind of potential damage uh, you may run into down the road. Now, prices on all these items can range a little bit, um, it, but they're generally very, very cheap and affordable and a great investment uh, for your comic collection, ensuring that they retain their value over time. Um, bags, you can usually get about 100 acid-free polyurethane bags, ultra-clear bags, for eh, about 4 to 5 bucks. You can usually get about 100 boards for about 3 to $4, again, acid-free. Uh, and your short boxes usually run you about three to four bucks, and your long boxes will run you about eh, f- five to eight bucks, depending on the person selling them. Uh, the printed boxes, like I said, are a little bit more pricey uh, for what you're getting out of them, but they are meant more as a decorative piece in addition to a storage item. Um, and those, like I said, will run you about ten to twenty bucks. Uh, they always come pre-made. So if you need uh, some instructions to construct your box, be sure to stick around in this video as I'll go over it a little bit later. Um, I made this mistake early, early, early in my comic collecting career where I would uh, try to force things into box holes that didn't fit, and I ended up tearing a handful of boxes. I'm sure I can show you over here in the video um, where I had to duct tape them closed because I made the mistake of trying to force things where they didn't go. Generally speaking, um, if it's resisting you more than you would expect, you're probably doing something wrong, and you probably missed a step somewhere. So be sure to check that out later in the video. I think that covers all of our bases, so let's get into it. So here you have all the materials you are going to need to do a proper bagging and boarding of your comic book. I'll bring you up some packaging right now. This is the typical packaging of your boards and bags. They usually look something like this from a company similar to this. You have the era of the bag, you have the basic dimensions of the bag based on the era, of course, and then you have some extra advertising stuff like the ultra clear material, and you have your, of course, acid-free uh, signature badge there that you really need to make sure you have. Make sure that these bags, these polyurethane bags, are acid-free as well as the boards. So let's take one of these bags. As you can see, they're, they're very transparent on their own. They, in a pile, they look a little blue, but that's just because of the way blue light uh, reflects and refracts. And here we have our acid-free board. Now, as you can see, one side is coarse and one side is fine and smooth. You always want your comic to be resting on the smooth side, and there will usually be a little bit of a bend to the board. As you can see, there's a little bit of a curve, but that's okay. You want a little bit of... Uh, tension there to spring your comic forward and present it well and prevent it from getting any kind of cracks in the binding. So as you can see there, the smooth side goes forward and you just 
slide it right in. If you have the proper bag and the proper board, it should fit very snugly. Now take your comic. This is uh, Doctor Strange Damnation. Very good comic. It's a standard size comic of the modern age, of course. And you just take it and slide it right in front of that smooth side of the board so it can be displayed at the front of the bag. Now, obviously, you're making sure that the tab is on the front side so you can fold it to the rear. Now, you see there's still a little bit of bend, but now that the comic's in there, the bend is much less significant. And it just puts a little bit of positive tension on the front of the cover to prevent the spine from getting any cracks or bends in it. Now, as you can see, there's a little adhesive strip on this particular brand of bag. It's not necessary whatsoever. Don't pay extra for this little strip. In fact, I would encourage you not to do it because if you use that strip instead of like a piece of tape on each end, you can get uh, incidents where the adhesive wears off or becomes a little too acidic and starts to roll up. So use scotch tape, one little tab on each end of the comic, not the middle. You, you do not want to put the tab in the middle because the comic plastic will start to roll up. That polyurethane will roll up and expose the corners to any kind of elements or your fingers or any other kind of damage. So put one little tab on each end of the comic, not in the middle. As you can see here, the comic is very well secured. I didn't have to put anything in the middle. If you want to add that third piece, you can if you want to. You'll see a lot of comic shops put that in the center. You do not want to do that. It's fine for very short-term storage, but for long-term storage, you do not want that tab in the center of the page. So here you can see the comic is well bagged and boarded and well preserved. I've checked the, the corners and the edges for any kind of seal breakage, and it looks pristine and ready to go. So here you can see all the materials you're going to need to construct your box. Uh, I have the box materials laid to the left. I have some cardboard to the right and some scotch tape for a future tip. Now, this might seem like common sense to most of you, but let me tell you, I've made the mistake before of not thinking before doing and accidentally tearing some edges. As you can see, everything would came uh, pre-perforated there. Um, I've obviously constructed this box in the past, so all the perforations have been broken. But normally, <clears throat> you would have to break apart these little perforated parts before beginning. This is the lid piece. As you can see, there's a little wing on each side, perforations already broken, and then you have an overlapping flap with two panels. Again, two wings, overlapping flap with two panels. You're going to take the long sides and bend them into the interior. You're going to take the wings on either end and pull them in so they connect and make a square. You'll take the overlapping flap and you'll pull it over the two wings and push down and insert that preformed tab into the little hole there. You're going to square off those edges and you will have half of your box lid made. Again, push the flap down, put the two wings towards the interior, pull the flap over them, and insert the tab into the hole. Square your edges and you have a sturdy, well-formed box lid with no tears, no breaks, no nonsense. Now the box. The box is a little bit more tricky. Again, it, this seems like common sense stuff, but I I've made the mistake in the past, and I know many people who have, and have duct tape on their boxes to show for it, because they tried to force something into a hole where it didn't go, or they tried to bend something away it wasn't supposed to bend. So normally you would break these perforations for the tabs, and once you've done so, you just push on the box to form a square. As you can see, there's an open end with no extra nonsense, and then there's another end with a big flap and two wings with holes in them. So, try to get this in the camera view. You're going to put that into a square shape and pull the square side down. As you can see, there's kind of a half moon uh, tab on that, and you're going to press that into the bottom of the box. I'll show you the different angles so you can see in 3D space where this tab is going. 
It's not going to stay here. You're going to pull it up and inside of the box in order to finish the construction of the box. But for now, bend that down just so you can get a visual I idea of where this flap is going and which part it is in relation to the other parts. Now you're going to push that all the way into the box so it's flat against the wall there. As you can see, it's flat all the way through. I'll throw you again, show you again in 3D space. Flap is all the way inside against the wall of the interior. Now you're going to take the, the, the two wings on the larger tab and fold them in. And you see it's catching a little bit on the box there because I've already made it. But you're going to fold them in like so. So now they're folded on in on top of each other and underneath the half moon tab. You're going to put them square flush against the bottom as you can see forming the box and then flip it over on the interior you're going to pull the half moon tab up and press it against the side of the box and pull these wings all the way through to the interior of the box and it's hard to do it and show you at the same time so I'll do one at a time just to give you an idea as you can see, I pulled that wing all the way in and pressed it up to the, the, the smaller width side of the box. And then I pull the other wing in, and you take the half moon tab and press it down to secure the floor of the box. As you can see, this makes it so the half moon tab is holding the two wings inside the box, and the two wings are holding the floor of the box in place. Now, if you choose, you can push those wings back down and fold them on top of that. I wouldn't recommend it. Just leave them upside, and then it will help secure the handholds for when you need to carry it somewhere or place it somewhere. And as you can see, you, if you've done everything right, the lid should fit. You shouldn't have any torn edges, and the box should be good and secure and snug. I'll show you the different angles to see that no mistakes were made. There's no parts sticking out, no extra paper sticking out or anything like that. Now, here's a nice little tip for you. As you can see, these holes expose your comic books a little bit. And if you happen to have forgotten to clip your fingernails or you have long fingernails or, you know, it's pressing up against something that's pointy, those holes can expose your comic books to damage and it doesn't take a whole lot to to pierce that polyurethane bagging. So what you want to do is take one of your comic book boards, again, very cheap, take a piece of scotch tape to secure it at the top, and you're going to put it right in front of those tabs. And you're only going to tape down the top. That way, when you put your fingers through, you can put them all the way through and carry it properly. But you now have the added protection of a board to prevent your fingernails or any kind of pencil or pen or any other kind of potential puncture inflicting device um, from damaging your comic books. I've, I have in the past accidentally torn through the polyurethane of one of my comics because I didn't know to protect my books with this little trick here. As you can see, I put my fingers in and my comics are protected. My, my fingernails and nothing else are going to pierce that book. But if I take it out and I put my fingers in and I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to carry this stuff around, my fingernails can very easily scratch through that polyurethane protection for your comics inside. So just a nice little tip that I've learned from experience. And uh, I think a lot of comic collectors would do well to follow this little trick and protect their collection and here we have the framed uh, Doctor Strange comic that you might have seen in our other instructional video. And you can slide that in there with the rest of your comics. Obviously, you don't want to store it like this. But you have a well-secured, well-built box with handhold protectors to make sure nothing damages your precious books. Thank you for watching this Hit the Books instructional video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe down below. It really, really does help us out. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to go down in the comment section and send them our way. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at HTBVids, 
and on Facebook at forward slash hit the books, all one word. You can also go to our webpage, www.htbvids.com, where you'll find buttons to all of our feeds and our podcast stations and our YouTube channel right there on the homepage. Just click the, the button there for your convenience and check it out. There's a bunch more content on the site, too, and no advertisements that'll give your computer a weird virus or anything. So feel free to check out the website. It, it really is a convenient resource. If you'd like to help support this channel further, consider visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash hit the books. All one word. You can contribute as little as a dollar a month, and it really would go a long way to helping us out and keep content coming at a brisk pace. Remember, there's no obligation, and if you can't or don't want to contribute, we're more than happy to have you here as a viewer and as part of the community. So please keep watching and keep enjoying. We love having you around. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this episode, and be sure to tune in for the next instructional video and any future podcasts or content on the channel. See you next time.